Confederates are now on the south side of the Monocacy River. Uh, the Confederate General John McCausland, 1,200 dismounted cavalry, had crossed Worthington Ford, gained a foothold here on the south side, moved up onto the property of the Worthington family uh, homestead and farm here, and they believe they have achieved something dramatically important for this fight here. They think that they have gained the flank of the Federal Army, meaning in short, they think they have found their way around the end. So they are preparing to move in a, essentially a roll-up maneuver, as you do when you flank an army, you get around on its end, you then begin to attack laterally, rolling the flank up on itself. That sounds like this is about to start wrapping itself up pretty quickly if you think you've found the end. However, one of the other themes of Monocacy battle here is not just uh, a lack of commitment to a general engagement or a stubborn defense of the positions you're holding. One of the other themes here is things are just never as you think you're perceiving them to be. So McCausland, McCausland thinks he's gained the flank of the army. He thinks he's about to begin the wrap up, the great roll up of whatever's here. Union General, U.S. General Lew Wallace has personally seen this movement take place. He's going to order General James Ricketts, part of that 6th Corps that got here, those veteran troops that are experienced fighters, he's going to order them to turn his line entirely and face this threat. Matt, obviously the federal troops, the U.S. troops, know what's coming at them. Their right. direct orders are to turn and face it. Yep. Does McCausland know what he's walking into or marching into at this point? It's a great question, Pat, because he doesn't. What's going to happen is, is that half of Ricketts Division is going to turn, as Pat said, and face this direction. So we now have the battle line facing north, turning one of its brigades so that it's now facing west. So follow that movement we talked about, right? Everything was positioned north and south. Now we have part of the Union or U.S. line sort of creating a, a door hinge here. That's right. We've swung back because things are beginning to shift and move that east-west or west-to-east type of movement now. That's exactly right. Now, with this federal force, they're going to throw out a line of skirmishers. So again, this, these uh, skirmish lines coming into play here at Monocacy, and they're going to advance across the fields of the Thomas Farm. Now, here at Worthington Farm, Confederate forces, McCausland's Cavaliers, do not realize what is occurring in front of them in small part due to the fact that it's a fairly flat terrain through here, and the fence line that Federal forces are going to hunker down behind is also partially covered by half-grown corn, okay? It's been a hot summer, but a somewhat wet one, and it the corn has been doing fairly well. Now, interestingly enough, the Worthingtons, most of the family is hiding in the basement, but John Worthington, the father of the family, the patriarch of the family, he's upstairs watching what's unfolding in his front yard from one of the upstairs windows. And he would later write that he didn't understand how Confederate forces could advance across the front of his property seemingly directly towards that Federal skirmish line hunkered down behind the fence. Now, if we look this way, we have landscape looking out towards the Thomas Farm. Thomas Farm is where we're going to see the bulk of the fighting here at the Battle of Monocacy. And this first attack, this cavalry attack, is going to sweep right across these fields. And today, about where Interstate 270 is, it sadly does divide Monocacy National Battlefield, about where that interstate is today is the old property line between the Worthington and Thomas Farms. And as those Confederate Cavaliers, again, dismounted, approached within about 125, 100 yards of that skirmish line, Ricketts skirmishers rise up. And they're going to pour a withering volley into this Confederate advance, forcing them to hit the deck. Now, these troopers would eventually fall back to the Worthington property and likely just behind the hill that the house now sits on to reform. And it is at this point that John McCausland who has just been punched in the teeth unexpectedly is now going to take a tactical pause and try to find out what exactly is in front of him. Interestingly enough, it is during this period, due to this attack, probably right around 12.30 in the afternoon, that General Lew Wallace will order the wooden covered bridge across the Monoxy River at the Georgetown Pike to be burned, and the vast majority of federal troops still on the north side of the river will be withdrawn down here to the south side. There will still be a small contingent of troops guarding the Monoxy Junction itself, we'll touch on them later.